got a deal and how the players will accept it. Obviously, you have to wait to hear from them, but you put this thing together, you yeah. looked at it. I, I, I'm, I'm confident because it was an agreement that was the result of so much compromise on our part and their part that we, we you know, it was the kind of thing that's just a win-win for everybody. This was not one of those um, agreements where one side had any advantage whatsoever. Um, it, it's a win for the sport, I think, and uh, I know nobody in the room here was uh, was gleeful. It was very serious, and um, you know, it was it was kind of like a, a difficult, long negotiation. But the, always the thought was, if we could get a 10-year agreement um, that was at least reasonable um, and that maintained the ability uh, where every team had to spend the exact same amount of money, that was crucial because it, you need to. That's one of the keys to the popularity of the sport. It's what the EPL, English Premier League, NBA, everybody wishes they had that. We know that if you're a fan in any market in this country, small, middle, or large, um, you have an equal chance for your team to succeed. That's all you can ask. Do you think as a group you have a, a, a better concept of supplemental revenue sharing now than we did in 2006, one that goes over with the membership better than we did in that time? I, I would say so, yes, I would. I, I would say people were uh, supportive and uh, understood the need that uh, when there's really a, um, a significant need by a franchise for whatever reason, um, they would be eligible. What was the toughest concession for the ownership group? Um, you know, I, I don't want to go into details, but there were so many <laughs> that uh, I, I can say that. There were just uh, a but lot. But a couple? A lot. Uh, and... Um, I, I really don't. I don't want to say that because on all sides work. All sides worked hard, uh, including the player side. And uh, I, I think the sense for everybody was, um, let's achieve this and uh, let's compromise. Were you surprised at the veracity? Oh, yes, absolutely. So one of the words that seemed to be used a lot, maybe it was by the media, was mistrust. Both sides. There was a mistrust over a period of time. This is a hell of a leap of faith. This is the idea. I mean, a 10 year deal. Well, and also letting this go a few days where there's still work to be done. As ah, well, you know, we, we felt that um, we're ready for football. It's, it's an agreement that's really fair, and uh, it's been pretty much fully agreed to. So uh, it's not about a leap of faith, it's doing what's right. And for us, it was right to focus now on football and let the players follow. And, and do that too. I think it's what they want as well. So it really was about um, uh, coming together as a partnership. How big but is the no opt out? The, the idea. That is big because it means that for the next 10 years, uh, this is a labor agreement that we can just focus on football and the sport and growing it and making it safer, better for the fans, better stadiums, all the things we want to invest in without any chance for any opting out. What was the scene like in the room as this? Let me go back to the yeah, I, I just think that I think most of us were thinking the players would say yes, that you say yes. So the order is a little bit different. So go back to that, that trust factor. Yeah. There's a few day period now where two sides have had their differences in that department. I'm not, I'm not saying it's across your fingers time, right. but there really seems to be something that was not the way we originally thought it was going to play out. Well, I think, work, yeah, I think, you know, probably in early stages of negotiation, there was mistrust. As both sides started to get together and compromise, there was a feeling of trust. And that neither side was trying to accomplish something that was unreasonable. So I think there's, going away, a real feeling that uh, just been reasonable and uh, let's, get, let's get this done. So we took the step to do that. Can you describe what it was like in the room as the vote started to go through? Um, you know, just a, a, <laughs> I think people were so tired that it was uh, <laughs> uh, a sense of, but it was no sense of, of joy. It was more like, this is the right thing to do. Um, this is going to solidify, stabilize the sport for the next 10 years. Us, the fans, the players, nobody has to go through this again for another 10 years. None of this every three or four year uh, stuff. And um, uh, I think there was a sense of real satisfaction on that front. Um, you know, sometimes when I think you're negotiating a deal, you have to focus on the big picture items. And the big picture items came to fruition for all sides. And then it was working out the details. Did you have 31-0 for the Raiders abstaining, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Any surprise the Raiders would have seemed to abstain? 
Uh, I, I, I don't know. I can't comment. This is since the football's back to normal. Right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good line. I should have thought of that one. Yeah, See you. Thank you. So the, Eric, thanks. You got it, Clark. The idea that you knew that they would not give you an answer before you voted today, was there ever any consideration yesterday or today to not vote? Not at all. No, we felt that uh, it was important to, uh, to come to our own agreement that this was a reasonable deal and um, set the tone and uh, give them the opportunity to understand that we fully support it and fully support their coming to uh, their support. I don't know if burden is the right word, but the burden now is on them. Right, and I, you know, I, I have so much respect for them as well, and uh, I think they'll make the right decision. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Lowry, week two, you'll yeah. be back here in Atlanta, right? It's week two, that's right. Excited, yeah. excited about that game? I'm very excited about all the games, but very much, and I'm sure Michael Vick's excited too. <laughs>